Sweet, I'm good to go. My name's Ollie Chesham and I'm back in the match day 23 after five months out following a fractured dislocation of my left ankle. It was a, a normal week. We were building to play Ireland away in Dublin. It was our big training session of the week. We were on our, our main team session on the field. I remember just making a break um, off a ball that Marcus had given me. I was about two yards from, from the line and I, I got tackled from behind. And it, just a freakish incident, my, my ankle got caught um, under a couple of bodies. And uh, from then I just remember it being pretty painful. Um, I didn't really know what had gone on. My initial reaction was obviously like it hurt, but then I was like, if I've rolled my ankle, I should probably get up and carry on training. But as I looked up, I saw I think Faz, Wacker and, and Lenny were sort of in the, the vicinity and they sort of had a pretty horrible look on their face and they all sort of looked away. So that's when I knew something probably wasn't quite right. And then I just remember the medics being so good to me. And then I was on a, a green whistle. I think it's called Penthox and it's basically um, a really strong painkiller, but it can make you pretty loopy for, you know, the time that you're taking it, um, but it works. I will forever remember as the greatest 10 minutes of my life. It's a good session that. We had to deal with something halfway through boys, but it didn't deflate us. So when something like that happens in the game, on Saturday, which it will, so anticipate it, just remember our response today. Remember our response. It hit me that, you know, I was gonna be in for a tough sort of five, six months rehabbing this injury. Three weeks after actually having the injury, I was back in club at Leicester and cracking on with rehab. And that was quite exciting, really. You know, when you're at home, away from all the boys, obviously the lads were still playing in the Six Nation. You feel quite lonely and, and pretty useless. So I was I was quite looking forward to getting back into club and, and just cracking on with rehab. And I wasn't really thinking about too much other than just taking it day by day and, and making sure that I was doing everything I possibly could to, to get my ankle in the best position for, you know, whatever task I was doing. And the rehab starts out very basic and then starts to progress. The stronger and stronger the ankle gets. The elephant in the room was that I knew when I had injured it, the time scale for the injury meant I would be cutting it close, be selected and, and playing the World Cup. And I had several phone calls with Steve in, in terms of just making sure I was doing absolutely everything I could to, to be fit. And that was a real motivation. When I was at Leicester, I wasn't really thinking about playing too much. I, just, I knew I was very much in the early stages of rehab and that was a long way off. So I came into camp in June. And that's when the, the realisation hit me that, you know, I probably haven't got that long left. You start to doubt whether the ankle's feeling as good as you think it should, only being two months out from being back in team training. So I suppose that was when, you know, I started to get myself down a little bit. And then obviously the, the selection aspect, you know, I hadn't trained and a lot of all the lads had been, been in training. I was fortunate that England had, had brought over um, Rob from, from France to to help aid my recovery. And it was a strange feeling, obviously being at Leicester, I was very familiar with the, the medics and the physios and you can instill a lot of trust in them. I kind of had to give Rob that trust straight away, knowing that he was sort of in charge of my programme, but very quickly he became settled um, with, with what Rob wanted me to do. And, and Rob as a person, he's been such a great person for me and obviously helped me massively with my ankle. And we started to get to know each other quite well and what I needed from a recovery and a training perspective and he sort of got to know me a bit better and we've developed a very good relationship over the last couple of months that I've been here. It was a, a massive challenge, I think, for, for both of us. You know, you compare it to the club environment where you, you're typically working with a physio and a medical team that you're really familiar with. You see them every single day, every single week, sometimes years on, years on end. It wasn't that we had to, to build that trust quickly, but it's always going to be a massive factor when you're rehabilitating such a big injury in the time frames that we had. You know, it was a collective goal that always helped. You know, we were both working towards the same thing. I was sort of guiding him, uh, giving him a bit of a roadmap, um, but he was the one doing the driving. You know, he's, he's put the work in and I've just been alongside him to point him in the right direction, I guess. People can sometimes uh, forget how mentally taxing rehab is 
for, for athletes. Ches, you know, he's getting back to, to hopefully be involved on the biggest stage. But setbacks always happen. They're, they're part and parcel of the rehab process. And I think what's been really good working with Ches is how he's dealt with those. You know, that, that level of understanding that he's had and the determination to take it as part and parcel of the journey that he's on has helped massively because he's taken them in his stride. And I think that level of acceptance to, to deal with any given session or any given week has worked massively in his favour because even if things go amazingly well on any given week, you're, you're always working towards that next session, the next step forward. We were in Brighton and that was my first time being back on the grass, boots on and running. It was a strange feeling. Obviously I got a whole new ankle really and it wanted to function in a completely different way as it used to. I suppose the overriding feeling was a little bit of disappointment. Obviously coming off the, the Alter G, the treadmill, I was able to run almost normally by the end of it and I sort of was hoping that that would you know, transfer onto the pitch but there's such a big difference in in one running on, on a pitch to running on a treadmill but two running back you know full body weight and having not had an injury before you know I wasn't really expecting that. I've got a lot of decreased range in my ankle now on my left side compared to my right. There's a plate in there, there's a few tightrope ligaments, there's a lot of different sensations. Three, two, one, change sides, whip both sides up. Push harder, push, push the post over, push the post over. There you go, change sides. Good, push the post over, push it over. When you decide to slow down at the moment, it's slap, slap, slap. Yeah, I want to be a bit more firm, a bit more. I had to retrain myself to run again. But when your right side feels fine and your left doesn't, it's, it's a very strange, strange feeling. And you almost have to break it down a little bit to sort of build itself back up. We had to strip back my running mechanics right back to almost as if I'd not really ran properly before. So in the early weeks, I was doing a lot of work with Jonas, who's part of the S&C here. Um, and he was sort of trying to improve my running technique in terms of ankle position and, and levers and just making sure that I was running as efficiently as I, I possibly could. With that, we also had to try and navigate a few sensations and a little bit of pain that I was having in the ankle. We had to try and find a way of running that would enable me to still progress and get what I needed out of it without it being too painful whilst doing it. Where I'm getting that pinch is in that. In that position. In that position or? Oh, this foot? Yeah. But like it's either when I'm really far out here or when I'm really extended there and obviously coming down, it's like toe first, and for like half a second I'm in that. I, I just think in my head, like, I'm not letting, it feels conscious not letting it get there, yeah. Eventually, like I say, my ankles adapted and that all started to settle down and then we could really focus on opening up and increasing my running load and introducing a whole new load of activities. Why are these so hard? Oh, mate, you're opening your camera and I'm looking good. Missed that one, didn't you? Let's go. That last 
those last black last, last block I was sore running but like nothing to stop me the only pinch I ever had was second rep of the second round okay yeah no second rep so second round of the first set yeah on that hit rock bast round hit you I got a pinch when I come up and hit you and that was the only one I had in that whole 40 50 minutes of riding. Get these, get these lifts done. Yeah. And then recover, 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 recover. So massive for the remainder of the day. 16, 16 or 17 weeks post-op. Probably four weeks out from, from, you know, being ready to play or being at least being ready to go into team, full team training. So that was my first. I had a little run out earlier in the week. That was my first big sort of run into a bit of contact stuff. And we're going inside now and hopefully do a few line-out lifts and, and see how that goes. And then we're... We're really on the road to being back into training. Lineouts is a pretty big part of the game for me, being the position that I'm in. Obviously, I could run, I could do contact, but you know, dropping from a, a decent height onto you know onto this foot, uh, having not done it for a long while, and having not done it since I'd had the operation, was was quite daunting. Actually, it was a, a really positive, you know, outcome. I was, I didn't feel any sort of sensation in my ankle. It actually felt pretty close to normal. I probably didn't feel as good to lift as I used to, but the lads didn't tell me that, so I'll take it. Again, that was a really reassuring session. That that was the last sort of real big tick box for me before I could get back into training. Was that I could, I could do lineouts and I could scrum. That went way better than expected, sir. Before. Before that session now, all we've done is jumped off like plyo boxes that are maybe like five feet tall. And obviously there's no no jump. It was just me landing onto a, like a, one of them big thick crash mats over there. So first session jumping, obviously it's a big part of what I do. So I'm really happy with that. So there was a group of us when I first started my rehab here in camp, um, part of the rehab crew. That was myself, uh, Billy Winopola and, and Luke Cowandicki were the three original members of rehab crew. Um, and they've sort of slowly come and gone. Um, either the lads have recovered or um, you know, they've gone back to their clubs for whatever reason. And new lads have, have come in, uh, Jack Walker and Ollie Lawrence. They were welcomed as new recruits and it's been good. Like I say, injuries can feel quite lonesome if, if you're on your own. So to have, have each other there, just have a laugh and being part of rehab crew, you spend a lot of your days together. Your schedules are very much similar because we're not on the team schedule. We'd be doing off-feet conditioning and gym together and treatment. So. It's been it's been massive having those lads there, and it's been good to see the lads that were in that in that group with me have also recovered now and come out the other side of their injury. You know, Billy played last week against Wales. Ollie's played, so it's just myself and and Jack that are still you know the remaining members of rehab crew yet to play. Kyle, Jez, brilliant. Come from where you've come from, mate. Well done, mate. Sat down for a meeting this week, uh, and Steve announced the squad at the end. And just to see my name back up there, um, you know, it was a proud moment. Um, you know, when you get injured, you you don't know when this is going to happen again. To be able to share that with all the lads in the room, everyone was just made up for me. And um, just seeing, you know, at the end of the meeting, everyone sort of coming over and congratulating me. You know, that's when I, I realised that I was, you know, finally back in the squad, and we'd, you know, we were, we were almost there. It's weird how it's sort of come around and we've, we've gone full circle really, but when I, I did the injury we were, we were prepping to play Ireland away in the Six Nations and my return game is going to be Ireland away in the, in the Summer Nations series, you know, prior to this World Cup. It's almost like this sort of chunk of, you know, this last sort of six months hasn't really happened and that, you know, we're just back to where we started and, and back to how it was, what was supposed to happen, I suppose, which was me playing in the game and so it's, it's really exciting. You know, at 22, as I thought that I was sort of unbreakable, and you see these injuries happen all around you. You see lads have surgery and, and what have you, and obviously it's a big deal. But you, you know, you just think, oh well, 
Hopefully it doesn't happen to me, but unfortunately it has. And it's taught me probably that, you know, it definitely, definitely made me a better professional in terms of, you know, what I'm having to do pre and post session now to, to make sure that my body's in the right spot. But also it just made me realize how grateful you are to play rugby. I remember having a meeting with Steve and I sort of said to him, I'll, I'll never not appreciate being able to, or be so grateful being able to just run around and, and play rugby with my country and, and just play rugby as, as a job, which has been, um, you know, the best few years of my life so far and um, yeah, I'll never take it for granted again. So what, whatever happens this weekend, whether I'm fortunate to play or, or not, you know, for me, this really marks the end of this sort of rehab chapter and it's a great achievement for, for both myself, but you know, for Rob and the rest of the medical staff um, that, have, that helped me along the way. Good. It clearly meets the yellow card threshold. It's going to be a yellow card and off field review. Eight white. So I've just had word the foul play incident's going to be upgraded to a red card. High degree of danger, no mitigation. And that's time. 